Welcome to the Wellness Homesteader. My name is Kim. I'm glad you decided to join us today. So I was actually getting ready to stock up on some of my laundry products, which I do make. And I thought, you know, we've been really focused on canning and food preservation and building a pantry. Why don't I just turn the camera on and show you some simple, safe, and healthy hacks for doing your laundry. So my son, who's now 35, uh, was born prematurely and had a lot of skin sensitivity issues. And that really prompted me 35 years ago to take a look at what was inside uh, products that were used for cleaning clothes. So even the baby sensitive skin type products were problematic at times for my son. So through the years, I would love to know how much money I've saved and how many chemicals I've avoided by just simply making my own. So today I'm going to be making over here, you can see over here, some laundry soap, but that's gonna be a separate video. Um, I actually had grabbed some fabric softener that I've been making and I grabbed it out of the cabinet thinking I'll go ahead and filter it. And I thought, hey, why don't I just show you how to make it because it's so very simple. So I don't have particularly hard water. I do have a water softener, but everybody loves that nice soft fabric softener feel that you get from uh, putting Downy or one of the other brands into your clothes. What I noticed was that anything highly scented, and they almost all have colors in them now, as well, colorant of some sort, um, could cause a problem for my son. So I at first began using, and it sounds awful, just plain old white vinegar. So 5% acidity, the same thing that we're using for canning. I think, don't quote me, I think I paid $1.38 at Walmart for this gallon jug. Um, it's just great value brand. Now you would think putting vinegar in your clothing, um, you would smell like a pickle, but actually vinegar does not smell at all. Once it's run through with your clothing, it actually leaves a nice fresh scent. If you like more scent, you're not sensitive to lavender and you wanna put a little something extra, then you can take, this is a quart of white vinegar and what I put in there is just some organic lavender buds. Now, depending on where you source these from will depend on how purple they are, the type of lavender. So you'll notice my fabric softener has a little bit of a reddish purple color to it. Um, you can buy a grade of lavender bud that does not have quite so much color. This does not stain your clothes. I've never been sensitive to it. Obviously my son has grown and gone, so I'm not doing his laundry. All you have to do is get your, so I like using glass and you, you all know that, but um, then you can reuse it, reuse it, reuse it. I just took this jar. I put a cup of lavender buds in, four cups of vinegar. I put it in the cabinet, promptly forgot about it. It's been in there just over a month. The longer it sits, the more color it seems to take on. Now all I need to do is simply, I just grabbed this cute little bottle, is just filter out the lavender buds. So I put a coffee filter inside of a filter and you just simply drain it into the bottle. And I actually think it's really pretty. And then I'll put a label on it into the laundry room it goes. So I'm gonna set that aside because I wanna talk about just a couple other things uh, before I end the video. The second thing I wanna talk about is stain removers. So there's nothing worse than buying a light colored shirt, dropping spaghetti sauce on it, or um, cutting your finger and bleeding on your clothes and it doesn't come out. And then you have this yellow icky stain. So spray and wash type stain remover products are also quite full of chemicals, um, not colorants, but a lot of times fragrances as well. So I began searching for an alternative. I get really, really dirty here on the homestead. 
And unfortunately, we seem to have um, accidents where, you know, I cut myself, get blood on my clothing. As a nurse, I've known for years that straight hydrogen peroxide will take blood stains or organic stains. So things like um, body fluids, I'll just leave it at that. It will take it out of the clothing. You need to make sure that your clothing is color fast for hydrogen peroxide. So a second alternative, and this works great, is just to use soap. So this is a bar of Kirk's Castile soap. So it's 100% coconut oil soap. It's a very hard and white soap, no coloring, no scent. Um, I keep this in my laundry room on a little wooden um, soap dish. I wet the bar of soap or wet the clothing, rub the stain, and 99 times out of 100, Castile soap will take the spot right out. Other options that work really well. I grew up on this. I don't know if you all have heard of Phil's naphtha. It's a very old fashioned laundry soap. And I actually use this oftentimes when I make my laundry soap by grating it and diluting it. And we'll do that in another video. Another soap that a lot of people like, and, and I like it as well, is Zoat soap, which is a laundry soap. Zoat um, you can get it white. You can get it unscented. This particular bar is pink. It's called Pink Zote. And it has a little bit of scent to it, but it's not highly scented. I could not find anything in the ingredients that was really worrisome to me. So I feel really safe using this as a stain remover. And then finally, who doesn't like their clothes to smell good, right? I certainly do, and I have a confession. I was addicted to laundry scent boosting crystals. <laughs> so I really liked the way it made my clothes smell. But as I looked at the ingredients, and I knew they were highly perfumed, and I knew they were highly colored as well. So I was putting dye and perfume, and that was something I'm, I'm trying to eliminate. And certainly you can't do it 100%. But I was like, okay, there's got to be a way you can make your own, which uh, way more economical. By the way, we didn't, I didn't even mention, you can well imagine you can make a lot of fabric softener with the lavender buds and the vinegar for a very small amount of money. So you're going to save money there. The Kirk's Castile soap, not super expensive. And the Zote's about a dollar. The Phil's Nap is just a little over a dollar. But this will last you a long, 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 long time. You will save so much money, especially if you're making your own laundry soap. And part of wellness is having financial wellness. And if I can save money by doing a little bit of work, provide for the future wellness of my financial picture, I'm certainly willing to do that. And I know a lot of you all are as well. But back to the scent crystal addiction. Okay. So I was like, there's got to be a simple way. There is. So I did buy this glass mason jar at Walmart because it'll last forever. It has, and I always have trouble getting this lid off, but it's just me. Um, it has a seal that keeps it in there tight. So inside here looks like laundry scent boosting crystals, but you'll notice there's no color. But ooh, I wish you could smell it. It smells really, really good. I discovered that you can take coarse Epsom salts by the generic El Cheapo Epsom salts at Walmart or discount store of choice. You do need to put a little bit of baking soda in it to prevent it from clumping up because then I put essential oils in and what I like to use is something along the orange lemon line. I really like that. It leaves a nice freshness to your clothing. I just put a little scooper in here. And uh, each time I do a load of laundry and I have a front loading lo loader washing machine, I just throw a couple scoops of scent booster in, put my vinegar in the fabric uh, softener dispenser, and then I use my own liquid homemade soap, which we'll be um, doing on another video. So let me know what you think. Do you think it's worth 
the extra effort to save a little bit of money on the products? Are you motivated by eliminating chemicals from your life? You know, the other thing I thought of as I pulled all this out to make the video and to make the product, I thought, wow, you know, I don't use nearly the amount of plastic. So, you know, I'm being kind to the earth and not filling up the landfills with tons and tons of plastic bottles, although the vinegar jug is plastic. But um, so far as I know, it doesn't come in glass. So um, hopefully we can recycle that for um, something else in, uh, in a future project. So uh, let me know your thoughts below. Again, don't forget to, to subscribe if you haven't already to the channel and you find value. Thanks for joining us today.